Michelle from Her Baby. It's just my personal site, a little place where I write stuff about my kid. Um, detailed stats. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is sort of blogging 201. What to do once you've gotten started, sort of like how to keep it going. <coughs> Sorry. Um, it's really easy to start a blog, and I think a lot of people start a blog and think, oh, this is going to be fantastic, I'm going to get all this stuff out of it, and then sort of maybe a month or two in it, they're like, now what? Um, and I think really the most important thing the most important thing to do when you are trying to figure out how to keep it going is to really understand why you're blogging in the first place. I don't think enough people really stop and ask themselves, why do I want to blog? Why do I want to have one? It's sort of like, well, their mother-in-law is doing one, so they want to do one too, or their, their friends have done one, so they want to do one too, but they never really stop and think about, what am I trying to get out of this? What What is my end goal in terms of blogging? Um, and as far as you know, reasons why people might do it. There's the, you know, the online diary. That's really what I do. It's just really documenting our daily lives for our own purpose. This is an example of that is amelon.com. You know, if you read her site, you'll, you can tell. It's really written for her. She might have tens of thousands of readers, but she's really writing stories about herself for herself, for her kids, sort of a legacy sort of thing. Um, might be because you want to share information. Maybe you know something about a topic and you want to share that information with somebody else. Like Bakerella.com is a great site for uh, recipes and sort of ideas on how to put stuff together. <laughs> There's to tell a story. Um, new one that I just found today, you are you. Um, it is, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that site. It's pretty kind of out there. Um, four year old, <coughs> and six year old, born a boy, transgender. And sort of the mother's writing about the story about, you know, I, I gave birth to a little boy who wants to be a girl. So sort of writing the tale of how that comes about. So it's really just telling a story. Stays very on that story. She doesn't write a lot, you know, three or four times a week at the most. It's really when she's really actively writing. But she stays very close to this is my story about this particular topic. You don't get any information about anything else in their lives. Uh, another reason is just to have a voice. You know, Ravenstall did something that pissed you off and you want to scream about it. And <laughs> you told 10 people, but it just that. doesn't feel like enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy talk. <laughs> but the one thing he won't do is talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you have something to say and you just want to say it and it's a way to say something publicly. You may not actually have anybody reading it, but at least get that feeling of you've got it out there, you got what you wanted to say out there. Uh, there's a lot of people who do it because they want the community. Uh, Blogger.com is a site that is a lot of mommy bloggers coming together, talking. There's a little bit of a drawback to doing it for the community. As wonderful as the online community is, and it is wonderful, there's some amazing things that can come from the online community. But there's also some negative things that can come from it. Uh, there's a lot of negative energy, especially mommy blogging. There's so much crap that they throw at each other. It's unbelievable how mean people can be to each other sometimes. So there's that sort of, there's that negative energy to the community that if that's why you're doing it, you really need to think through, can I take it if somebody leaves me a horrible comment? If somebody says, you're a bad mother, go spend time with your kid, quit playing on the computer, is that gonna hurt your feelings and make you like feel bad for hours? Because maybe that's not why you want to blog then. It just might not be the right thing for you. You can't take that criticism. When I get hate emails, nowhere near as much as you do, but no, I get. <laughs> but you have to be okay with reading those and being able to file them away and say this is this isn't because this person genuinely thinks it. It's because they want to play this game or whatever. It's really never anything personal. I mean, I got two when I I wrote something about. Um, I was actually excited to see Christmas decorations early this year. It's been a new house, and I'm kind of excited to actually put stuff up. I get two things I hate email over that. <laughs> you know, don't feed the corporate monster. Don't encourage them to put that stuff out. Come on, what the hell? There's a life. You know, you, you just have to be okay with getting those kind of emails, especially if you're in it for the community, because there, there is a negative side of the community. It's definitely there. Uh, some people do it just because they like the process of writing. They want to be better writers. Um, I think that's probably my secondary, secondary reason. I want to work on my writing skills and do a better job of writing. And if you're doing it for that reason, it really is going to solve a lot of problems for you when you get down the road. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, some people do it to make money. There are definitely people who, sit, who look at Deuce and say, wow, she's supporting a family of four with this site, and she only writes a couple of times a week, and she takes pictures, and I, I can do that. I can write better than her. I can take better pictures than her. I'm funnier than her. Um, we'll come back to that in a second, too. And then there's people who do it for a combination of reasons, and that's fine. You don't have to say, I'm only doing it because I want to tell a story, and I have to stick to that. It's just, I think it's important to ask yourself, why am I blogging? Why do I want to do this? What am I trying to get out of it? Uh, 
and I want to give you a little example about what money, if you're doing it to make money, you might as well just stop now. The money's not there. Really, especially mommy blogging right now is being highlighted by the media. Um, I tried to work on it who writes for Woulda Shoulda. She was on the Today Show probably about a year ago talking about, you know, how it's a business now. Mommy blogging has become a business. And she got quoted this one little tiny quote about how she's making more money now than she did in her office job before she was doing blogging. They didn't mention a few minor details about how she's making that money. She's literally writing for dozens of sites. It's not just wouldashoulda.com. She's got whatnot.net and at least a dozen other sites that she writes for, plus she's a professional writer. She does ghostwriting and all these other things. So they, they made it sound like she's making all this money off of what shoulda. She's not. She's not even making enough to make a car payment from it. And she has probably 20 times the traffic I do at her site. <coughs> uh, just to tell you, I have 20,000 hits per month, somewhere around there. I get about $100 a month in ad revenue. I run four ads right now. And 20,000 is not a huge number, but it's also not a little teeny tiny number either. And it, it doesn't happen for everybody. Some people are happy with 20 hits a day and there's nothing wrong with 20 hits a day. That's, that's actually pretty amazing. You've got 20 people who care about what you're writing about. That's, that's amazing. So if you're in it for the money, just get out. It's, it's not gonna work out for you. The market's saturated. Now I'm gonna come back to my question of why. You know, why you need to know why you're blogging is because it really solves all your problems as you're going through life. You know, you'll hear people complain about, why well, I, I need to write more, I should write more, I should blog more. Well, why? Why should you blog more? If you're doing it for documenting your own story, do you need to write more to document your own story? You know, I write daily because I know I need to in order to make sure that I get it done. I'm a master procrastinator. It's what I do best. I procrastinate like nobody's business. And Jen's dying laughing because she knows how true it is. <laughs> so I have to set that daily deadline for myself because if I say I'll write when I have something to write, I'll have something, and then like a week later it still won't be done. And then a week later it still won't be done, and by then it's forgotten. So that's why I write daily, it's because I know I need to in order to achieve my overall goal. It's the only way to work. Um, you'll ask yourself the question, you know, is this appropriate? Should I have this on my site? Is this something I should talk about? Well, why are you blogging in the first place? If you can answer that question, you probably can answer, should I talk about this on my site? What content is appropriate? Uh, should I be anonymous? You know, I'm not, but I don't have our names on our site either. And that's just because when I left my daughter was 13, I don't want somebody to be able to Google her name and come up with a story about her when she was two that, you know, that might not make her happy. That's yeah. the only reason our names aren't there, but it's not anonymous by any means. I don't, whatever, her name's Alexis, my name's Michelle, my husband's name is Wayne, good luck with all that. <laughs> you know, that's not gonna get you anything in life, and it's really not gonna hurt anything, but, but it just out of fairness to her, you know, a boyfriend shouldn't be able to Google her name and get story about, you know, something she did 10 years ago, it's not fair. Um, is a particular topic okay? Is a particular language okay? You know, I don't cuss on mine. That's because when she's 13 and she's reading through this, I don't want her to be like, why won't I? Why aren't I allowed to say that? You use that word, why can't I? So, you know, there's that little bit of, am I okay with her using this word when she's old enough to read this content? Okay, then I can use it. If there's some words that she's not allowed to say, no, I will punch her, so let's keep it off of there. <laughs> Other people cuss, who cares? But it's your site, you can do what you want. It's just, what's your overall goal, and is that appropriate or not? Uh, the should I include photos? I get asked a lot about whether it worries me that I have so many pictures of my kid online. It really doesn't. Um, I come up on the first page of Google results for naked toddler photos. I'm fully aware that I do. <laughs> but what it takes you to is a picture of her giving a doll a bath, and the doll isn't wearing any clothes because dolls don't wear clothes in my house. But, you know, if I'm a creep and I'm Googling naked toddler photos, how disappointing is that? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't care. Google search your heart is content. Because the people that are looking for that kind of content, they're not looking on your personal site. That's not the best place to go to really hit the jackpot on what they're looking for. <laughs> and they know where to go. And they don't care about my kid giving up or all that. Uh, big question, can I talk about people? Is it okay to talk about, you know, my mother-in-law? Everybody knows she drives me crazy. She knows she drives me crazy. But I don't include that content on my blog because that's not fair to my daughter to give her preconceived notions about somebody. Let her make her own decisions. So I feel like, you know, yeah, she buys her the ugliest clothes I've ever seen. I don't even know where she finds the stuff. But I'll let Alexis decide that I don't like this dress, I'm not wearing it. 
I don't need to tell her you shouldn't like to stress and your grandma is crazy. She can do that on her own. <laughs> Um, and I've said that to her face. She's fully aware she's crazy. Uh, should I have ads? A lot of people go back and forth and they make this big philosophical debate about whether they should have ads on their site or not. Does it fit in with your why you're writing in the first place? Because nobody really cares if you do or not. I mean, I have ads solely be and the only thing that the money goes to is my daughter's savings account. I just figure, well, I'm writing every day. People are looking at it like the house. She can have a couple bucks. So 100 bucks a month goes into her savings account. It's nothing to me, it's not enough to live off of, but it'll mean something to her you know, in 10 years. And that brings us to finding fodder. I think if you know your why, and why you're writing, and you can kind of answer all those questions, those problems that come up that kind of get people stuck, then it becomes a little bit easier to go out there and find things to write about. I've been writing day, almost daily, I have missed a few days, for about five years. You won't find the first three years because they're very well locked and hidden and actually in, only exist in paper up in my kitchen cabinet. But it's really, once you, once you really understand why you're doing what you're doing, it's a little bit easier to go out and find stuff to write about. Um, one place to start is read other blogs. Not completely stuck, go read some blogs that you like, see if they give you any ideas. Maybe they wrote something and you just, it just made you angry or you completely disagree with it or you absolutely agree with it or you have a story to add to it that reinforces their point, write about it. There's nothing wrong with getting inspiration from other places. Uh, you can expand on a topic. Maybe they mention something, but they sort of do it in passing. Well, you can expand on it. The only thing about that, when you're looking at other blogs for inspiration, you know, be original about it. Don't copy and paste their content and then call it a day. Uh, I've been plagiarized six, six times of entire posts, copy, pasted, and done. Why? Like, what's the point of that? What does that really achieve? So be original about it. You know, link the person. If they, if they really inspired you to tell the story, send, just say, saw this over here and thought it was an interesting topic. There's nothing wrong with giving that credit to them. Another one is memes. Um, some people say it's memes. It's actually memes. It's Greek for minima, something imitated. Now, you can go ask. 4,000 bloggers and 3,000 will probably say memes are stupid. And the other 1,000 will be like, eh, whatever. There's nothing wrong with them. I'm sorry, but there's nothing wrong with taking inspiration from an idea that's already out there and, write, and making it your own, as long as it fits in with your why. You know, if I'm writing to make, you know, keep a story about our lives and make sure that my daughter has you know, documentation of her childhood, and I see an idea for a meme that's out there that's you know, 10 things that inspire you or 10 best Christmas gifts or something like that, that fits in with my why, so why not? There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you can go out and find them at thedailymeme.com. There's tons of ideas. And every community sort of has its own. The Mommy Blog community, there's Photo Story Friday, where people post a photo and then they tell the story behind the photo. There's Thursday 13, list 13 random things. Weekly winners, best photos that they've taken that week. Uh, love Thursday, it's you know, a love story, something that makes you happy. That, reminds you of love, um, not watering Mondays, is recipes. There's really nothing wrong with that kind of content. As long as it fits with your why, you make it your own. One of the main things that I think people have trouble with is when they go to write a post, they either have nothing to say or they have too much to say. Um, I mean, how many times have you gone to a blog and they had a post that was like this long and it had 50 points and neither, none of the points were really well told because it sort of became like, here, let me spew this out. I think that if people stop and force themselves to limit it to one topic per <coughs> post, you know, that might be 50 separate posts. That's good. You, you've got 50 things to talk about. You can keep yourself going for quite a while. Instead of spitting them all out in one, because you're not as happy with it when you do. And I've heard tons of people say, well, it takes too long. Every time I sit down to write a post, it's like three hours, and I can't be doing that. It's because they're talking about too much at one time. Keep it short, stick to one thing, stick to one topic, and, and tell a story with it. You know, if you're sitting on the phone and you're telling this person the same information, how would you describe the story? Uh, a couple of, I think it was actually last weekend, I just wrote a couple of things that my kid had said that were funny, and one of them was, I think we deserve Starbucks. Well, why did she say that? Why Starbucks? Is there, there's a story there. I could, tell, I could give a whole blog page around, I think we deserve Starbucks. Because there's absolutely a story about why she said Starbucks, why she said deserve. There's a story about, you know, 
good lord, the poor kid has seen Starbucks every day of her life for three years now. There's, you know, why didn't she say Sonic? No. <laughs> Seriously, why didn't she say Sonic? <laughs> Even something as simple as just that one sentence. There's a story there if you really stop and you ask yourself why. And this is really the main one that I use. This is the thing that I do every day when I sit down. Um, I tend to write my posts after my kid goes to bed. And that's what, what was different about today from any other day. I think anybody can sit at the end of the day and find something that was different about that day from every other day of their life, whether it was good, bad, or ugly, and then say why. Why was it good? Why was it bad? Why was it horrible? You can, you can always find a way to sort of bring that into a story somehow. It might be just you saw flowers sitting somewhere. Well, what about those flowers that caught your attention? Did they remind you of something from your childhood? See, I talk too fast. I'm going to be done way too early. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a way to bring a story around if you just stop and think about it and challenge yourself to do it. <laughs> Anybody have any uh, personal experience with? Uh, I was tweeting how clever you were with the oral. I'm trying to think of examples of when there wasn't a story there. Right? If once I really sat down and forced myself, there was. It's, it's every day. Every day, I think I have nothing to write about, and I sit down and I ask myself this question. And every day, there's a story there. I just have to be willing to sit and look for it. I think that's really the challenge, is to not, not give up, to not be like, well, I have nothing to write about, I'm not going to. If you really want to, if you really think you need to write, there's something. Just, just keep asking yourself. Have you found, I know I found this, the dawning of Twitter and how it can affect my blogging. I find myself using my best material in 140 characters, and I have nothing to write about my blog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did for about two months. I blew every good story on Twitter. Um, eventually, the way I sort of solved that for myself is I separated the two. There's stuff that's appropriate for Twitter because it doesn't fit in with my why of my blog. And then there's my why. And every once in a while, I'll give a punchline away on Twitter. But they're very separate. I mean, Twitter is me. It's whatever I want to say about anybody at any time. I don't care. As long as I would say it to their face. I do have that kind of rule. I don't say anything that I wouldn't say to somebody's face. Just, it's just, it's just going to come back to haunt you if you do. I don't know anybody who's not had it come back to haunt them. So, um, Actually, one of my, ver my very first uh, commenter was Sunny and Cloudy. She was a local Pittsburgh person who I knew kind of lived kind of close based on some of her blog posts. She wrote a post, but she was completely anonymous. I have no idea what her real name was. She wrote a, a whole post about how her sister had just made her absolutely insane. And a week later, she wrote a post that was, my sister read that, oh my god, she violated my pers my personal space because she found this. And then the blog was gone a week later. She took it all down. So I have to imagine, sister finds it and goes, I can't believe you would tell that to total strangers and not even talk to me about it first. And then there's a big fight, and you've got the blogger thinking, well, it's my space, I can write what I want. It's anonymous, and you're not supposed to find it anyway. We've got this person who just had this story broadcast about them to total strangers. And maybe they don't even understand that world. Maybe they don't understand why we all write out in this internet thing. <laughs> so I just don't do that. I don't write about people, but if I do put it on Twitter about somebody, I've told it to them. I mean, I've told my mother a lot of it herself so many times. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Stop buying clothes because they're just not going over well. You know, just heard it. What are some of your favorite blogs when you read on a regular basis? Amala. That's church, um, woulda, shoulda. I tend to like, I tend to prefer ones where I'm like, how the hell did they write about that and make this story out of nothing? Those are the ones that I like the best, that they just sort of craft away. And it's like that, there was no content there, but they still made a story out of it. It's still interesting. Deuce is the queen of that. You know, if you look at Deuce's book, there's no content there. She's not telling you anything, earth shattering. But the way that she writes and the way she describes situations, just, it's amazing. And that's sort of like my goal is to, I aspire to be as good of a writer as some of those people who can really just tell a tale out of nothing. Funniest um, guy on Twitter. They threw me. So I think you sort of downplayed the 20,000, because that's, that's a lot, right? I mean, there's. Yes, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't you know, I mean, that's probably more than 95% of blogs. I mean, so I mean, yeah. So I mean, yeah. Question: Has your writing changed 
when you generated that significant of an audience or any work to kind of you know? I, when I very well when I first started, I started for me just as a personal journal, and then I got really annoyed. Alexis was born a week, ten days late, and I got really really tired of emails and calls about did you have a baby yet? No, I will tell you when it happens. You will know when it happens. So I started just posting. We had an appointment, nothing. This child is never coming out. It's never happening. Forget it. And it was really just a way to get information to my in-laws so they'd stop calling with the same question. They didn't talk to each other first. They just all called, and I couldn't take it anymore. Um, and then it was sort of, this is how I'm going to get information to them, because nobody lives by us. Everybody's in Indiana or Tennessee, so we don't have anybody local to us. So this is, okay, And my challenge was just one paragraph about what she did that day, just purely for them. And then, I started kind of wanting that community a little bit because there's a lot of good that can come of it and just sort of wanted part of that, part of that, getting some advice and so I opened it up a little bit more but I still wasn't really sure and clear on what my purpose was. So I had a lot of memes that had nothing to do with anything. I would blog about blogging which is like, I shouldn't do that, I'm not good at it so I shouldn't do that. Um, in a lot of things it just didn't quite fit and then once I really figured out, you know, the only reason I should be doing this is for me and for Alexis. It, everybody else, screw them. If they want to read it, great. That's fantastic. I appreciate it. It's, it's wonderful, amazing. I get the best advice from commenters. But at the end of the day, I'm the only one who can make me happy, and I'm the only one who really cares about this site and whether it's okay or not. So I sort of flipped that switch. And I didn't change what I was writing about, but I changed how I was writing, and I'm much happier with it. I can find the day that I figured out I need to be doing this for us, not for the rest of the world. Um, I can actually probably find the first post where I really have my, my head in the game the right way. Just, it's written better. Because it's, forget all of that, just it's funnel vision. Uh, I have no idea how I got to what, 500 subscribers. I don't know, because I don't play, you know, I, I'm really bad about reciprocating comments. Um, I'd love to, I'd love to go through every comment that people send and visit their site and comment back. I don't have time for it. That's the first thing I have to kick out of my schedule. I can't work full time, have a life, and read 100 sites a day. So, did you say or not say you knew how many unique visitors you have? I could look and find out. So I don't actually. Is that like a thousand or a couple thousand? I have around 500 subscribers. It's 500 people have it in the reader. There's a feed burner thing in okay. my sidebar. So 500 people have it in the reader, the 20,000 people. So what is that? Most of my traffic yeah. is direct. Yeah. yeah. Direct or referrals. Yeah, it's a ton of traffic from that search. A ton of people going to the blog roll. So, you. Michelle, in terms of, you know, saying that you write it for yourself, you know, is there, has there been a time, either before or since, where you put something up and you regret it? Like, you're like, I wish I hadn't put that up. But you, I, 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 I'm guessing, you know, you keep it out there. Yeah, I do keep it out there. Um, a couple of times when I got off topic, like, I had started getting emails about people who were asking, like, how to take good pictures of the kids, you know, tips for photography. I'm really not that good of a photographer. There are millions of people who are much better. No, I'm really not. Compared to some of the people that are out there, there are people who know way more about photography than I do. So I wish I hadn't dipped in that briefly. And I, I've caught myself pretty quickly. So there's, those people are much better at this. Just start replying with those URLs. Because th there's, there's some amazing photographers out there that can do some amazing things. And sort of just I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I don't think there is. Not that I can't live with, you know. The worst is yet to come. <laughs> and I still haven't hit the point where Alexis can read it and say, I can't believe you just said that with total strangers. So <laughs> until we hit that day, we're, we're in okay shape. If she really strongly objects to it, would you like alter it? Like that? I'll take it down yeah. like that. Yeah. If she doesn't want it there, I'll take it down. Yeah. Yeah, boy, I've had that talk. Mm -hmm. I could take it down today, and I would not regret it. Mm -hmm. If I had a good reason for doing it, I wouldn't regret it. I just pull it private and still have all the same content. Um, I think that was important, was reaching that point where I was writing for me so that I didn't need that validation. I think that helps a lot in terms of keeping going. If you need that validation, you're in trouble. I mean, if you're looking and there's no comments and it's really bothering you that no one's commented yet, no, you've you got to get yourself straightened out because it's, it's not going to help you. I don't have any comments on my post from last night yet. I'm not crying about it. 
You're all here. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Well, uh, my question is actually going to be, if, if it came to the day when Alexis says, I want you to write about me, what would you do? Would you write writing, would you change your, I, I would, would take you, it down instantly. Would you keep writing instantly. public, just change your content, or would you just keep writing the way you've been writing to keep it private? I would probably take it down instantly, keep writing, keep it private, and I'd probably start something else public that was just completely different. That's probably what would end up happening. When you first started, did you promote yourself? I mean, now a lot of people know who you are and can go directly there, but do you, and I know you can post on Twitter, but do you do anything? I, when I worked for UPMC for about a year, um, I was in the middle of this very politi difficult political position where I worked for one department but reported to another, and I wasn't allowed to actually work on anything until my boss approved it. So I had weeks on end where I literally had no work to do at work, and I wasn't allowed to do anything because I didn't know all that. All that. So I had time to go out and comment on other blogs. That's really the only promotion I've ever done is just commenting on other people's sites. Um, that actually is the best way to get yourself out there: is commenting on other people's sites. That does it. That'll get people to find you and discover you. So there are people who feel obligated to respond to every comment, and they'll come visit you. And if the contents anything they can relate to, they'll be back. Other than that, I you know I've never gone to a blog for conference. This is my first time doing podcast. I do it for me, so I don't really need to do. I mean, it was weird. My husband made business cards for me, and I was like, "Ooh, that like makes it look real." <laughs> it was weird. This is gonna be that way too early. How did you get help with all the technical issues? I mean, it's not just always about writing content. It's um, 3 a.m. figuring it out on my own. <laughs> Yeah, I, I actually like the challenge. I know a tiny bit of HTML. Like I learned a little bit in college that I could still I can edit other people's stuff. So like my layout is stolen from the internet. Somebody put up three layouts. You can take them, and I tweak to the HTML. Um, I actually I have a dummy site that I do that all on that is closed off to the universe, so I can sit and play when I have ten minutes. And usually it's I get in the middle of the night and I decide something needs to happen and I sit up until 3 a.m. until it's done. But occasionally I'll ask for help on Twitter. And Twitter can answer every question there is on the planet. It doesn't matter what it is, somebody on Twitter knows the answer. I mean, I said my iPod was broken, it's getting fixed. <laughs> it's an amazing world. <laughs> so um, in Verizon, that whole thing's only getting fixed because of Twitter. My Verizon debacle of them sending us to collections for a bill that we didn't, they actually owed us money, not we owed them money. And I tweeted about it a couple of times, said a few words that I don't normally say, and <laughs> I got contacted immediately via Twitter that, and somebody fixed it. So anything that you're looking for, in Twitter's the best. I love that. Um, a couple other tips. Please do not post to apologize for not posting. I want to choke you when you do that. I mean, have you ever seen it? You have to have seen it. People will sit and they'll write a whole paragraph about, well, I don't really have anything to say, but I want to throw something up, so I'm sorry I don't have anything to say, so uh, bye. Just don't. If you don't have anything to say, don't say anything. Um, I think the only exception might be, you know, if I were to disappear off the face of the earth for three days, people would wonder, because I post daily, so I probably should put something up to say, I'm going to be gone for a few days. Uh, you went on vacation, people were like, what the hell happened to her? Did she <laughs> run in an alley? You know, if, you, if you're there daily, it's probably a good idea to say, hey, I won't be posting this is why, but you know, I've seen people who they regularly don't post. They go two months without a post, but then their post will be, oh, I've been kind of neglecting this for a while. Sorry about that. Yeah, nobody cares. <laughs> don't put it up there. I'm sorry, I don't care that you haven't posting. Um, another thing, consider the monthly challenges at Novel Como. Uh, it's National Blog Posting Month. It used to be November. There's a, there's a challenge to write every day in the month of November. Um, and really, if you look at it as a challenge, it's, you've done it and had, yeah. we're happy with yourself though. Yeah, I was. I mean, yeah. if you can manage... It's a good exercise, yeah. it definitely is. It's a good exercise of just sort of making yourself really focused and post daily. But it's changed to not just being November, now there's every month they run it. And there's a different theme <laughs> for each month, I'm not sure what this much theme is. But sometimes you can get some inspiration from places like that, there's nothing wrong with that. Ask others. I couldn't even tell you how many times I've tweeted, I have no idea what I'm writing tonight, help. 
And people have asked a question and I've answered it and that's been the post. You know, it's brought something about. Uh, Boy gave me a couple of ideas the other night when I was emailing him about something random and, was, and there's like five posts in his one little statement that will eventually work as fodder. So don't be afraid to ask people, you know, ask me a question if anything and turn it into a post, nothing wrong with that. Uh, revisit what you've written. A lot of times if you go back to your archives you'll get some good ideas. Uh, maybe something that you didn't finish telling the story, and yeah, well, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, how to make them. Me, I haven't finished that story. Um, it's because there are people not cooperating with me on the issue. Um, if you look back through your archives, you'll get inspiration of things that you could have written better even. You might even find a post that you're like, that was a really good idea, but I didn't do it well. Just redo it. There's nothing wrong with that. At what point do you distinguish between going back, and editing, cleaning it up, and just leaving it alone? or writing new material. It goes back to your why. Why are you blogging in the first place? Communicate something about something as well as possible. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all about what you're happy with. I don't have a problem with reposting my own material. I try not to do it just because I want to challenge myself to come up with, I want to be able to answer that what was different about today question. That's always my goal. There's nothing wrong with reposting old stuff. Like, whatever. It's your blog. This whole idea that there's rules about blogging and that there's a right way and a wrong way to do it, screw that. It's your blog. Whatever makes you happy, just don't post about why not posting. <laughs> <laughs> that was real. Okay. Um, another idea is to find ways to track ideas when they happen. I'm awful about that. I need to write things down to remember them. Um, but I know there are people who are really good. You know, they have their iPod or the fancy Blackberry, unlike me. And you know they'll put a subject line in and just leave it in drafts. I know people who have hundreds of drafts sitting out there that when they need inspiration, they go back to the drafts and start sort of working on them. I don't have any one of them, but it's, it's a really great idea. I need to carry a tape recorder with me. That's what really needs to happen. Which an app for that? I have to have an iPhone, and I don't. Um, really, the biggest thing, I think, is making posting part of a routine. If you make it part of a routine, it's much easier to come up with content. If you're just like, you know, you're, you're an occasional blogger, it's harder to come up with content because you don't have any sort of deadlines in your head and you don't have any sort of guidelines to it. I mean, the fact that it's what I do after my kid goes to bed every night, it just is. That's, that's my downtime of relaxing and nobody talking to me and everybody leaving me alone. Um, making it part of a routine makes it much easier to sort of crank out content. You know, if you're just trying to squeeze in a couple posts during your work day and your work day goes awry, it, it's really going to screw you up and it kind of throws you off the game.
Um, I, I heard about it because there were people that were freaking out that people were reading their archives. They were like, this person's been on my site for 70 minutes and read like 40 pages. And they're like, that's so creepy. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, that's not creepy at all. It's kind of a really huge compliment. Your stuff is interesting enough that they're still reading it an hour later. They didn't click away. You know, and they were instant messaging and saying, why are you creeping out of my site? Why are you still here? <laughs> yeah, you're weird. Are you in iTunes or other directories? Not in iTunes? No directories. How, how are you networking? Twitter. That's it. <coughs> Facebook and blog posts. People list you on other sites. Yeah, blog rolls is more. Um, I did sign up for blog catalog way back in the day. It's a waste of time. Um, I'm listed on all top. I think I've gotten five hits ever from all top. So that's a waste of time. I, I tend to think finding your community and sharing comments is the best way to really, you know, finding a site you really enjoy, leaving comments, following comments of other people who like that site and comment at it. That's the best way to find your niche. I don't. I don't know that any of those directories really work for, I don't think they do. It's spammers use them, that's pretty much it, I think. I don't know, anybody know otherwise? Disparate bloggers is a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I think stumble, stumble upon, stumble yeah. upon isn't bad. I mean, yeah, people can find you who might not have discovered you before. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah, stumble upon is a fun little tool. It, it, I've had, um, there was a post where I talked about uh, somebody had made me, uh, tried to make me feel bad about not sending Alexis to a private preschool. And I was sort of like, you have to be kidding me, because no. I didn't go to one, and uh, in fact, I'm trailer trash, hello, and I'm fine. <laughs> Shout out to the trailer trash. <laughs> um, so I had written a post about that, it got stumbled. I got 10,000 hits on that one from stumbles. So stumble upon can drive a lot of traffic. The only thing is it's random traffic. It's not. You know, it's not people who saw a similar blog and might be interested in yours. It's completely random. So you don't keep that following. You might grab one or two. Yeah, the conversion rate's awful. But, you know, if you've got something that's good, send it to somebody to stumble. It's not a good idea to stumble your own. It doesn't work very well. But it'll get, get it out there. It'll at least get some hits. It's just so desire. Uh, you said Funniest person on Twitter. <laughs> Uh, you said uh, the uh, one of the reasons that you do the blog is to strengthen your writing. Is this the only writing that you do, or do you have other um, projects? By trade, I'm a training manager for a construction company, so I do technical writing. Uh. But it's the only place, actually. It's the only place where you use really bad grammar. <laughs> but that way. <laughs> and I'm fully aware of my bad grammar. It's intentional. Okay. Anything else? Well, if you have something else and you're too scared to say it because it's 400 degrees in here now, feel <laughs> free to stop up and say hi and thank you all. Sorry, it was a little short, but you started. Hopefully, you got some ideas. Yes. Hopefully. You